So previously I shared a video about how to create a heat map visual in Power BI using the built-in matrix visual with some conditional formatting. If you want to start there, check out the link here in the corner or in the description box below. In today's episode, I'm going to show you the beautification process I usually like to follow whenever I create a business report. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe button so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Before we head over to Power BI, please note that today's design tips are going to be my personal preference and it could be vastly different based on what you want to achieve. Try to think about these steps as a general guide that you might follow or pick the bits that you like. The plan is to change a simple heat map to a report page that we can publish to a post office website so customers can check what's the best time to visit and get things done. With that said, it's time to head over to my PC. So here it is, our heat map that we have created before. It's great, but in my opinion, this is not something that we can share with our clients or customers. Let's agree that we need to make this heat map a hero visual. What is a hero visual? I talk about this topic in this video, but essentially a core element on the report page that takes up most of the space on the canvas. In this example, we don't really have anything else to share, so let's increase the size of this to roughly 70% of the total page. Don't worry, we will adjust it later down the track. Here comes my process to make it look amazing. Step 1. Change the font size of the values to 18. Step 2. Change row headers font size to 15 and bold. Also, change the column headers to 8, essentially trying to hide it. Reason behind this step is that we are going to create a much better looking background for the whole report page. With the matrix visual, we have some options to adjust the design or format it. However, it's not as funky as it could be or should be. Step 3. Add some borders to it, both horizontal and vertical grid lines. Let's make the horizontals width 2 and the vertical ones 1. Lastly, change the color to black for both. Step 4. It's finally time to create some background. Once again, please note that in this demo, I'm going to create a design that I like. It won't contain any branding or stuff like that, just a background image, a title bar and some boxes where I can place the heat map and some filters. Add the image to the report page and adjust the fit. Now it's slowly building up. Step 5. Remove the background color of the matrix. In my opinion, this design looks much better than using the default matrix heading. A couple of things to keep in mind or things that I try to be mindful about. The size of the header text boxes is the same. While some days fill the whole box, others are not that long. The image is not too much and the colors are gradually changing from top to bottom. It doesn't contain any sharp lines or shapes that would distract the user. For this demo, I like the darker background color. In real life, I would potentially increase the transparency to make it a bit lighter. Step 6. Adjust the color of the column headers. I like to use Power Toys as a color picker to get the exact same hex color code. Step 7. Fine tune the column width to align to the header boxes. This is the most painful bit, but luckily we only have to do that once. Step 8. Add 5 slicers to the left for state, city, location and service type and service name. Step 9. Adjust the color on the slicer to be in line with column headers. This is just a small design tip, but have a look how much professionalism it adds. Now the slicers and the headers are the same color. Step 10. 
Lastly, let's add a quick color guide or legend to our heat map. I'm going to create five measures here. They are going to be min, 25th percentile, median, 75th percentile, and max of the number of tickets served. I'm just going to cut to the point where I have these ready. I'll add the dex code to the blog post, so if you're unsure how to get these figures, just head over there. Apart from that, I think we are good to go. I reckon this part is now done and dusted. I like the look and feel of this report. I reckon it's finally a page that we could embed to our website to allow our customers to pick the location of the post office and the best possible timing to visit and send letters, pick up parcels, or take passport pictures. There is just one more thing that I would like to add here to provide some average wait times as a tooltip. It's just a small but very significant quality of life count. Quality of life kind of feature. It means that we need to add one more measure to calculate the average wait time in minutes for a given time frame. Let's head back to Power BI. Because I have a super simple model, I can use a simple average service minutes formula here. With this done, let's create a tooltip page. Adjust the size of it to 330 by 360 pixel and add a background image that I have prepared for this demo. Then add my two measures here as cards. Finally, set up this tooltip page as a tooltip for our matrix heat map visual. One of the many things that I'm going to talk about in the third episode of this series is finding insight. Let's slice this report down to New South Wales, Sydney and Manly Corso location. If you have a look at the tickets on Monday between 2 and 3 p.m., we have a bit of a funny situation. While only two tickets have been issued, it took on average 8 minutes to solve these problems. Moving the cursor around, we can see that 8 minutes is on the more time-consuming end of the spectrum. Still, we are showing this day-time combination in the matrix as green. Is it good? Is it in line with our expectations? If we are strictly talking about the number of tickets, sure, it's true. But I think we can all agree that it could be better. Or in other words, we should dig a bit deeper to better understand what has happened there and maybe flag it to the team internally. Anyways, we will cover these topics in part 3. And now we can start testing this report and see how these elements are going to react when we start slicing and dicing. I love this result. Once again, please note that while you may not fully agree with my color choices or background image, today's demo was all about the process that I like to use when I create my report. It always starts with the same question. How can I best represent the data to my users? Or in other words, how can my report answer the business question while being somewhat nice? If you like the result, do not hesitate to hit the like button. I can wait. If you have any questions about the topics we covered today, you know what to do. Let me know in the comment section below. I try to answer them as soon as possible. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video. So please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.